Okay, guys, I forgot to put on the recording, so I'm putting on the recording now. Okay, um, you say I challenge managers in a tactful way. No, that's, I mean, that's perfectly, that's perfectly good. A lot of times the managers, depending on who they are, they want you to challenge them. They don't want to always be the ones making the decisions and, and being right. They want to see that some folks actually have the guts and the grits to stand up and challenge, you know, to help make them think differently. Oh, okay. You're saying your challenge is not to come across as a new aggressive. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's um. So your challenge is not to come across as an aggressive black woman, right? Or be labeled as the angry black woman. Look, I totally get that. You know, um, even in the workplace today, I have to be extremely tact uh tactful, and I think. You know, that's just going to be a part of, you know, you know, what life is going to look like for you in the workplace, um, because there's so many people with that bias. Right. Um, and to kind of get rid of bias, basically, that has to happen on the individual level with individuals around you. Like when it comes to perception, sometimes it's very difficult to break down a perception. Um, all you can do is somewhat manage that perception. And the way that you manage it in this particular case is being the opposite of what, you know, the stigma is, right? What the bias is, like Black women in the workplace are angry. That's not true. You know, that's not true. Not every Black woman is an angry Black woman because she speaks up for herself or she's assertive or she challenges you, right? That's a part of just being a good leader. That's what leaders do, right? Um, yes, I smile a lot in order not to appear as a threat. Yeah, I can I can kind of I can kind of see that um, for me, I just try to be um, pleasant, but that sometimes means that people think I don't take things seriously. Yeah. So you got to definitely be mindful of trying to manage that. Right. And it's good that you're aware of it and you really, you know, you you see it already. So, you know, that you have to some type, you know, and sometimes kind of modify, you know, what you're doing to be, be perceived in the in the in the right light. Um, sometimes it's a matter of just educating people because it's easy for us to make assumptions about individuals rather than us getting to know people, right? Um, so it may just be one of the things that you can do is figure out ways that you can network with some of these people, right? And particularly for you, I would, you know, I would want to network with people of influence, you know, folks that are on a higher level than I am, where people get to know you in a more, um, um, where they can connect with you. Yes, I have to be useful. I'm a contractor. Okay, where they can connect with you in a different light. Okay, yes, I have to be useful. I'm a contractor so they can get rid of me with just one week's notice if the relationship is not working. Yeah, so one of the, so in, in that particular respect, one of the things you need to make sure is that you're just always on your game in terms of the work that you deliver. Not that you have to be perfect in the work that you deliver, but you're going to make sure that whatever you turn over, um, is of excellence, right? Make it difficult for them to get rid of you, right? You know, insert yourself in the process where, um, you know, it's like a, a, maybe they're, look for challenges, right? Look for challenges in their workflow. Maybe there's some process that is not working really well and you come with the solution, right? And make sure it's something that's extremely critical to what they do. And it's extremely critical to kind of drive into their bottom line. So what industry are you in? What is your job? What do you What do? You do um, um, Sam? You're doing what type of contract work? Okay, project manager. So yeah, that's very critical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's not easy to, um, I don't think it's easy to replace project managers, particularly when, you know, you've probably been there at the inception of the project and you just have a whole lot of knowledge. I guess you kind of can be re replaceable when it comes to like managing schedules and budgets and things like that. But in terms of the actual knowledge base around, you know, what that project, the objective of that project is and what it's, what it's doing. Um, Sometimes that can be kind of difficult to, you know, to to replace. So just make sure you understand. Most time they bring me in if a project. 
So right there, that right there lets you know that's 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 pretty hot there. So if a project is falling behind schedule, so basically you're already you've already set yourself apart as one who comes in and brings, I would like to call it order to chaos, right? If something is fell, failing, so there's some type of breakdown or chaos, chaos in the system. So I like to call that I bring order to chaos. And that's one of the things that you know could differentiate you, you know, off off the bat. But unfortunately, when it comes to, you know, trying to deal with others' biases um, in terms of, you know, who you are, who you may be um, as, you know, as, you know, in your skin um, and as a female, all you can do in terms of those biases and those perceptions is just to continue to show up, deliver excellent work, um, continue to insert yourself in the process, you know, where things are extremely critical. And then... Um, just make sure you're doing the opposite of what's being said. So is that helpful for you? Absolutely, you're welcome, you're welcome. So today we're gonna talk about identifying and showcasing your value. So just let me give you guys a really quick, you know, about me. Um, I've already told you guys, you know, what I do. Um, this is actually a picture of my family, my husband, Pete, and our three kids. And then we have a bonus son who's like 22 years old and he lives in the New Orleans area. And um, for me, um, I took a very strong uh, liking to really helping women in leadership um, do three do three things, right? Is to really know your value and worth because that's really what sets you apart. Um, that helps you to not only... It helps other people to see you in, in a different light, but it also helps you to see um, and be aware of, you know, who you really are, you know, how fabulous and awesome you are. Also, um, my other desire is to help women co convert their potential into performance, right? Because that's really where you can have all of this potential in the world, but if you're not activating it and if you're not manifesting um, and really performing at that level, then nobody knows, it's right? You, you, you're still like this hidden secret, right? Um, have all of this knowledge and expertise and nobody knows about it. And then the other part of it is that leadership, the other leadership part of it is really making sure that we're developing other people, right? We're teaching other people. We're taking the knowledge that we have and we're actually sharing that with other people. So this was just a clip from a, a pick from um, last year, one of the How Confident Women Lead workshops that I did. And this was a, a room full of, um, we had owners, we had CEOs, we had, you know, directors of really a global organizations, you know, coming together. You see, it's a small group because I like to work with high level women um, and we're sharing and we're talking about confidence, right? Um, and so that's what I really like to build everything that I do around because confidence to me is an action word. Um, I was actually featured in February in Success Magazine talking about confidence, right? So when I think of confidence, I think of it being a belief that results in us taking an action that even if we're, we're fearful, even if we're doubtful, that we're still going to do something, right? So to me, confidence um, is a belief. It's an active belief. It's a, a belief that leads to um, to action. And so that's what I love to share with um, the ladies that I work with. Um, and so just kind of a little, a little bit of background about me in terms of kind of why I got to where I am. So I grew up in a little small town in Louisiana. Have you guys heard of New Orleans? Yep. So so I'm from, I'm from that state. I'm from the state of Louisiana. Okay. So I'm not from New Orleans, even though I lived I lived in that area uh, for like eight or nine years. But I'm from this very small town that's in central Louisiana. That's like less than five thousand people. And for me, there were like no mentors in the neighborhood. Like what what I saw as typical was like my friends getting pregnant. I saw like my friends dropping out of school, but there was like nobody there that was really telling you you can succeed and you can make it. But there was one TV show called A Different World. Have you guys ever seen this, this TV show? It was like a spinoff of the Cosby show, but it really followed, it followed us, it followed about five college students that looked like me that I could identify with. Yeah. I loved it too, that I could identify with on this fictitious uh, college campus 
And what was so unique about them was they were all aspiring to be, um, you know, you had somebody who, who wanted to be a doctor and somebody who wanted to be, you know, a lawyer and a political activist and fight for, you know, some of the things that other people didn't have a voice to fight for. Um, and then, of course, there was one who was an engineer, Dwayne Wayne. He wanted to be an engineer, but because he wasn't a cute guy on the show, you know, that was I hadn't made that connection just yet. Um, but I basically went on to, you know, to go into college. Um, I graduated, you know, with a mechanical engineering degree at the top of my class. And then I go into um, corporate America. And honestly, it was like a shock for me. Um, actually, I work for this particular corporation in Louisiana. Um, but what one of the challenges for me was I didn't understand how to showcase who I was, right? I was used to winning. I was used to being successful. I was used to leading um, in organizations that I was involved in. But when I got into, you know, this arena in the STEM industry, <clears throat> in an industry where there's typically more white males than any other demographic that you would see. It was a challenge for me. I didn't know how to really navigate. So I was doing my work uh, and I was still being mislabeled as the poor performer, the low performer, as somebody who um, didn't care, as somebody who was apathetic and didn't want to be there, didn't want to work, right? Um, I had all of these labels and I really started struggling because I really started believing some of the things that were being said about me, that feedback. Like I started to internalize that and it really sent me into a depression. But it was one conversation that I had with the human resource advisor that helped me to see, okay, let me go back and understand what is the feedback that's being said? What is this feedback coming from? Um, but also let me understand um, you know, let me make sure that I communicate and convey to management that I want to own my career. So I need to start challenging the managers and getting them to do the job that they're supposed to be doing. And so in a period of time, I went from being considered like the low performer, the one that was never management or leadership material to being the most respected in the organization. And I was very strategic about what I did. I was very strategic about helping to mentor other people. I was strategic about like some of the stuff that I share with you guys, asserting yourself in certain parts of the process is extremely critical. If you can arm yourself, you know, with the knowledge and arm yourself as being that ghost person, that people are going to see you in a different light. So I was very strategic about communicating what I was working on. I got, I started getting in front of like the high level uh, leaders in the organization and presenting on things. I began to be assigned like high visibility projects um that allowed me that face time with those individuals who had influence and one of the biggest things that i was able to do i was able to land a sponsor um for my career so he not only was a mentor to me and shared some incredible things about you know what i should be doing what i should be doing but when i wasn't in the room he was advocating and speaking up for me and so that's you know that's one of the things that i feel like is a major um game changer but there's still some of us that's struggling to get there because we're not we're not speaking out we're not sharing we're not telling asking for help right we're figuring if we're staying at our desk and we're doing our work and we're doing it well that somebody's just going to pass by and take notice and say oh you should hire uh, you should uh, promote uh shahinda or hey you know did you see what sam t was doing on this project you know we need to you know give her a permanent position or you know we need to sign her own for a longer contract and give her, you know, a few more hundred thousand um, dollars in that proposal, right? But the thing about it is, it's not what we deserve that we get, right? It's what we're willing to fight for. A lot of times we're very deserving of promotions and getting to the next level and uh, additional benefits and stock options and things of that nature. But it's not about what we deserve. It's what we are willing to fight for. And the fact that we have to understand that we have to own our careers, right? We have to be the ones who dictate where it goes. And so that means that we have to be strategic and we have to constantly be thinking about ways to improve. And so for me, one of the easiest ways to improve, to get a sense and a new perspective is for you to identify and to showcase your value, right? So we already kind of talked about what were some of the challenges um, that you guys have had. And I've heard, you know, promoting yourself 
um, is, is one of the, you know, the big challenges. And Sam T talked about, you know, not being perceived as the angry black woman um, and dealing with some of the cultural things and, you know, having to, you know, really wear a face in order to be effective um, in the workplace, you know, as a contractor. Um, but let's just, let's just start with this. Um, and then we're going to kind of get into, I'm doing a time check here. I know we're only supposed to be together for an hour, so I'm going to try to hit as much as I can. In 10 minutes, you guys can tell me if there's something different you want to talk through um, or continue the conversation. But when we talk about showcasing value, we're really talking about putting yourself on display, right? Presenting, um, showing your best advantage. It's like opening yourself up to be viewed by other people, right? And a lot of things that come along with that is, you know, number one, we may feel like, oh my gosh, if I really put myself out there, they're going to be like super critical, right? They're going to really, you know, share some things that I'm not really, you know, ready to deal with, right? That may be one of the feelings, right? Or is it just natural for us to, you know, to promote? I think for, you know, for us as women, just kind of, you know, and I think uh, Sam T and I had the same, you know, the same uh, point of connection, but like I was told not to be, I was told to be seen um, and not heard, to be quiet, right? Knowing you will be judged is a horrible feeling. Yes, absolutely. Um, and even just kind of owning your own business, you, that's a major thing um, when it comes to like putting yourself out there in terms of, hey, this is what I work on and making sure that you deliver and you get that feedback so that you can get referrals and get more business, right? So that you can continue to grow it. So I think for women, it, it may not always be a natural thing to put yourself on display, right? Particularly when you're used to being modest and you're used to being um, humble, um, that can be, you know, that can be a struggle. Yeah, exactly. But what we have to understand when it comes to leadership, when it comes to progression and promotion and development, that the only language that we should have, right, and the most important language that we can have as women is value. We have to learn how to speak in terms of our value proposition, in terms of, hey, if you don't have me on this team, right? Or uh, Shanda, like you may say, you know, if you don't allow me to be a part of shaping what things should look like coming out of the gate, you know, this is this is basically what you're losing. And that's one of the ways you can present, you know, a new opportunity to them. Like, hey, because you're not bringing me in on the front end, this is where we're losing, right? And if you can somehow quantify that in monetary value, right, in terms of dollars, that's going to make it even that more um, um, interesting. It's going to pique their interest a little bit, a little bit more when you can convert. Hey, because because we're having this breakdown in the system, this is what it's costing you, right? So that you can put yourself in a very good position. But we have to learn to speak the language of value if we really want to be effective um, and really maximize where we're going. Um, actually, we're going to skip over this video. Have you guys seen the video with uh, Cheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook, talking about, you know, uh, you know, how we underestimate our abilities and don't negotiate for ourselves? No. Okay, so let's pull this one up on YouTube because it's a few minutes long and I want to go okay. ahead and kind of get to the other slide. Okay. Hey, Elaine. Yeah, just make sure you guys pull this up. Take a note to pull this video up and just just watch actually i you know I, I just wanted to share a certain little section but she talks about how she and her girlfriend are in this it's some type of literature class and what happens her brother takes the class his, uh, her friend's brother takes the class with them and how you know they all semester they're studying they're reading all of the suggested readings and when it comes to the final like they're they're studying like the brother read nothing you know, he didn't read any of the books and he came to them at the end saying, hey, let's study together. And when they came out of the exam, you know, they asked the brother, how did you do? And his first res response was like, hey, I nailed it. I got an A. But the two ladies, when they came out, even though they had all of the right things, they had studied all of the right things, their response was, oh, I could have did better on this. Oh, I should have did better. You know, I could have answered this differently. Right. And they had mm -hmm. everything together. Him on the, on the other hand had absolutely nothing together. Yes, thank you for posting that. Um, so that's something you guys should go and watch. But this is, I mean, it's very classic to the things that we do. 
and how we um we you know we create barriers for ourselves right so we talked about yeah. that value yeah. you're welcome we talked about that value proposition right the pro and i say and i really say proposition because i'm trying to let you know when you can speak in terms of your value you're positioning yourself in a positive way right and so these are all of the things that we should be mindful of that kind of leads to what i would like to call your brilliance right you need to make sure that you're distinctive you need to make sure that you're unique um, that what you're doing is attractive, right? That you're constantly producing excellent work. Positioning yourself and showing up with your brilliance is what helps to set you apart. Um, and I like to really focus on that with my clients through what I call the influence and success wheel, right? And there's three components to it. And this is how you this is how you develop your value proposition, right? You need to make sure that you identify what your core values are. And I'm gonna break these down really quickly. You need to make sure that you identify your strengths and that's key that's important um sometimes you know we can allow an assessment to help us with that but also have your ear open and listen attentively when people are constantly asking you to do things that should that should be a signal for you that hey this is a strength right because people are constantly coming to me asking me for help in this area and then the last part is your instinct and this is what's so brilliant about the the success wheel is that we need to be in alignment with how we were designed how you were designed at conception you know your dna what you know all of those things that are in you we need to be in alignment with that because if we can be in alignment with our instincts we can we can you know perform at a much higher level okay so we have to define all of those things when we're trying to identify and showcase our value right so you have to be constantly thinking about what is it that i bring to the table what is it that's so different about me that really separates me from that other person right be thinking about um be thinking about what sets you apart okay so let's start with the strengths, right? Your strength is something that's inherent to you. It's an inherent capability to do something. These are these are skills and things that can be um, honed. You know, you can continue to you know master your craft and develop it when it comes to your strengths, right? So what I do when I have my workshops, I usually have um, this massive workbook that I share with um, the women influencers, and it's all type of strengths, things that's listed that let me see if i actually have a copy um it's things that listed sometimes they're really kind of it's really open to jog their memories um because sometimes we can forget about we can forget about the things that we're really good at um but i give them you know i give them space and time to just go through you know each one of their go through the the strengths list and they're highlighting as they go to figure out okay what are some of the things you know that i'm really good at so for me i know it's public speaking i do a lot of professional public speaking um and i get paid to do that right so i'm like okay yeah that's definitely a strength for my for me um because i mean i'm analytical i'm always i'm that i'm that person that's always driving towards a solution you give me a problem i'm always looking for some type of solution to that problem, right? I'm action oriented. I'm confident in the fact that, not that I don't doubt myself at times, but I'm confident in the fact that I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna take some kind of action. I'm gonna make some type of decision. Um, also, I love leadership. I love inspiring and motivating others. I'm determined. Um, one of the things that a lot of people tell me is that I have wisdom beyond my years. So I consider, you know, a wisdom as a strength, right? And I help, like I told Sam P, bring order to chaos. I'm the same way. I'm typically put on jobs where, you know, things is a nightmare. Folks are thinking like, you'll never get this done. And I typically, me and my team typically always come out on top with driving towards that, you know, that solution. And then I love coaching, right? Um, so... <clears throat> So Sam is asking the question, how do you differentiate um, a strength from a passion? So one of the things I like to say when it comes to a passion, um, either when it comes to a passion, either it's going to make you angry and upset, right? You're going to be mad about, you know, oh, they're treating this person like that, right? 
um, or, you know, this is going on in the world and this shouldn't be going on. Like you're going to be, so a passion is either you're going to have one or two responses. You're going to be angry about it. <clears throat> that means that you're going to want to do something about it. Or it's going to be something that makes you so excited. It's going to make your heart swell. Like you're, you're going to be glad about it. Right. And then it's going to make you want to, you know, do more of that something. So that's what I typically look for when it comes to a passion is like, what's one of the things that drives me, right? For me, a passion, the passion is the driver. The strength is an instrument, right? The passion is going to drive me and the strength is going to connect me. <clears throat> yeah. So you're going to be driven by the passion, but it's your strength that's going to allow you to fulfill whatever that passion is, right? So like I say, I love to help high achieving women elevate their influence as well as their visibility in the workplace. Well, the way that I do it is by, you know, like I'm taking a strength, which is my public speaking, and I develop training. <clears throat> I do workshops. I create like I'm getting ready to launch a new um, a new program that's actually called Maximize Her Leadership um, and Visibility and it's giving you 10 different strategies along with worksheets and video lesson, a short video lesson for professional women that can be done in 15 or 20 minutes minutes that's all around a specific topic for this, you know, negotiating for yourself is you know showcasing your value. Um, or is, you know, how to factor in self-care, right? So I use my strengths <clears throat> to help facilitate my passion. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So guys, I'm going to do a time check. Um, I'm going to continue on if you guys can stay on. I still got a couple more slides here to cover. Um, but it's probably one o'clock, you guys, it's time. So we are over our one hour commitment. Um, but I'm going to continue on um, if you guys want to, you know, stay put. Now, the other part of that success wheel is your instincts, right? And so this is how you will and you won't naturally take action. And I say this is so powerful that a lot of people are not getting this um, because we want to just focus on the strength, right? And I believe it goes so much further than your strengths. When you can tap into your instincts, which is a cognitive behavior, when you can tap into that, you're like really positioning yourself. So there's a tool that, you know, when I work with my one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one clients or even when I'm doing uh, mastermind groups, um, what I ask, you know, the participants to do <clears throat> is to take what I call the Kobe A assessment. I was actually trying to find the link to share with you guys um, on my computer because I have a, a special link to it. I'll find it and um, and post it. Let's see. I may have it really quick. I think it pulled up for me in the background here. Um, but it's called the Kobe A assessment. And what it does, it asks, it asks you um, a few questions. <clears throat> and what it does is is driving towards and it's basically what it's saying is regardless of what the situation is if you're designed this way this is how you will respond so it's all about how you would take action in terms of you know when it comes to making a decision right are you going to be the person that's going to want to go and find all of the facts before you make a decision and that's probably where i you know i'm, I'm like it says i'm a seven in that area because i like to strategize right I like to get the specifics. I think that's, that's just, you know, my nature. Um, and then I continue to build on that as an engineer, you know, to really dive into the details. Some people, they just want, they want you to simplify it, right? And they work best with making decisions at the top level, right? Just give me the overview. Don't give me all of the details because you're going to lose me, right? Um, the next part, it looks at, like, how do you organize and your follow through, right? For me, I, you know, I maintain it, right? I look for the discrepancies. I look for the breakdowns and I come in and provide a solution. Um, others are the ones that's kind of, you know, constantly developing the shortcuts um, or you're the one that's really designing the system, right? Kind of like I told you, Shinda, like how can you really kind of design the system, you know, and kind of dictate that so that, you know, there's not any breakdown. 
And then the other one is, you know, your quick start when you're dealing with risk and uncertainty. For me, I, you know, I modify, but other people may be, you know, they innovate, they figure out other ways to come up and are into actually do things. And then the last part of that is, you know, your, how do you implement? How do you um, bring what's intangible into something that's tangible, right? For me, I'm a visionary, so I can envision it getting done. I can tell you what to do. But I don't have to be the one physically doing it, or I don't have to be the one who has to physically touch it. And so when you can understand like where your instincts lie, and this is a like I said, this is a secret, a hidden secret that most people don't even know about. But if you can work in the realm of your instincts, then you give yourself a greater chance at um, increasing your visibility and showing up uh, powerfully in the workplace, but also showing up powerfully in the marketplace for those that own their own businesses. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, right. Elaine, are you still with us? I think so. Okay, awesome. Okay, glad to hear that, lady. Okay, and so the last part of the is called your core values, right? So this is like your guiding principles. Like no matter if like the sky, you know, the sky falls into the sea or the, you know, the moon falls out of the sky, um, then um, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, Sam, you said Belbin team rules their, uh, theory. Explain that to me. So with your core values, this is kind of your guiding principles, right? These are the things that will allow you to make decisions. Um, you know, the it's going to dictate your behaviors and your actions. So for me, core values, and we have to establish this, right? Otherwise, people are going to be willing to try to push boundaries. And if we don't put what our core values are, if we don't put uh, communicate that and put that out there, then people are going to be expecting us to take on what they feel like is important to them, right? So for me, what's important for me is my family. What's important for me is being truthful, right? Integrity, that's something that's really big for me. Sometimes I'll just totally disassociate myself with people that don't, you know, believe in being in integrity. I mean, that's just something that, that I feel like is very important, right? Um, another thing is I, I'm, a, I'm one of those people that are always looking for ways to lift up other people and to motivate other people and encourage other people. I'm not that person that you're going to find in the workplace is somewhere in a corner, you know, gossiping and, um, you know, and being negative towards other people. Right. Um, I typically have a positive outlook. That's something that I pride myself on. The other part is respecting other people, regardless of what their work function is. You know, I don't care if you're the CEO of the company or you're the custodian that's cleaning the bathroom, then I'm going to be respectful to you because I just feel like I mean, as a human, I should recognize that in another human. Right. So establishing your core values is going to be important as well. Right. So, ladies, tell me, what's one of your core values? Well, integrity is a, a most important part and also making sure that you respect others, regardless of their job, everybody is doing something that's important. So if mm -hmm. the toilet lady or the toilet guy or whoever is cleaning the toilet didn't do it, then you're going to end up with a bigger mess than the CEO didn't do his job. Oh, yeah. I don't think I want to yeah, <laughs> use the toilet at all. So that could be a mess as well, right? Okay, Sam. <laughs> and integrity as well so but you know again you know lifting up a so uh, again these are these are specific you know specifically mine i wanted to kind of give examples that were specific to me but you know there may be some other things you know that you guys pride yourself on but it's important for you to know that right and like i said when this is actually a part of the, the workbook here is, you know, I have a sheet on, you know, what are some of the personal core values, right? Um, and it, and, it, and it, it has a, oh my goodness, it has a ton of things on it. Some people pride themselves on diversity or collaborating with other people, right? Um, understand what's the diversity of, of thoughts there. Some people feel like uh, a core value is being compassionate and empathetic towards other people, right? So there's just a list of things that, you know, that could, um, or some of the other uh, core values are, you know, 
maybe you're a person that's brave and you're courageous and you think that's important for people or decisions that you associate with, you know, for that to shine through. So it's all about, you know, what's specific to you. Okay. Yeah. And so and this is kind of like how we started off the presentation. Like, you know, when it comes to showcasing your value, because it's something that most women um, is unnatural for us. It's not natural for us to just, um, you know, to self-promote and talk about ourselves. And actually, I'll be doing what I'm starting to do every month through the Influencers um, Leadership Institute is to cover a topic. I think next month we're going to be talking about how to get yourself promoted, right? Um, and then, you know, a part of that is, you know, why is it important for you to self-promote? And like when you fail to self-promote, what's the result of that, right? And so we want to cover all of those things. Um, but one of the things that I like to do, because it's not natural, again, to just kind of, you know, put, you know, put myself out there is I like to share my value with other people by using certain words, right? Like I love to, right? That, you know, that kind of helps it feel a little bit more natural to you are because now you're going to start engaging your emotions in it, right? I love to do, and you say, hey, this is what I love to do. Um, or how I typically talk about my business and what I do with my company, you know, uh, or who I help. I'm passionate about helping high achieving women elevate their influence and their visibility in the workplace, right? I like to lead with an emotion because, you know, it helps me. Um, to be able to, you know, to share that, right? So that's kind of, you know, that's some tips and tools that you can use if you're like struggling around, you know, really promoting yourself is you can use those phrases, right? And then you need to understand when it comes to delivering that with grace, um, understand who your audience is, who needs to hear it, how often they need to hear it, and when do you actually share it, okay? Um, do you have any tips on how to identify your core values? When you asked us earlier, it was a bit of a struggle. Um, yeah, um, honestly, what I do, and you can do this, Sam, is you know one of the easiest one of the easier things you can do is go out there and and do a search on um, personal core values, right? A list of personal core values, because um, your your you know it can be something as simple as you know being assertive. Um, or um, or core value of yours could be the fact that you think travel is important, right? So a lot of your decisions are based on, you know, um, you know, travel. You know, whether you take a job is kind of based on if you can travel. So yeah, I would suggest just go out and do a Google search on personal core values, um, and you can pull up lists um, of things. It just and a lot of times you just kind of read through the list. And what it does for you is just kind of jog your memory, right? Or just kind of, it's, it's kind of like a starter for you, right? It gets you to thinking about other things that's out there. Um, and so this is one of the, the things that I love to share. You're welcome. Is that your value proposition, and you see how I say your pro position, your positive position that you put yourself in, that's your gift to the world, right? You are designed with unique abilities and skill and a skill set, you know, that you've honed and mastered over time, right? You have different strengths. You have your instincts that, you know, set you apart. And then you have your core values. That's a gift to whatever industry you're in, to whomever you associate yourself, whatever environment or people that you're exposed to, your value proposition, what you bring to the table is a gift. And so what we have to understand is that we have to stop devaluing our gift and instead lead with it. And so that's really what I want you guys to kind of take away is for you to lead with your value rather than, you know, being quiet and not promoting and not showing up and not talking about, you know, the things that you do and how you're, you're, how you're contributing to the bottom line in your organization or how you're contributing to the bottom line or expanding your business. Always be open to, you know, sharing your value, right? So I, I call myself a leadership brand strategist because it's not just about a pretty picture or, um, or, you know, marketing yourself online, which, you know, there's some things that I also share with my clients about how do you market yourself, you know, to the world. Um, but for me, it's more so about if we can go internally and be self-aware, um, then um, 
we, we can brand ourselves a whole lot easier when we're aware of what are the things that make us great? What are the things that make us awesome? And I talk a lot about that um, in my book called Own Your Life. Let me see if I got a copy of that. Um, but it's called, um, it's called Own Your Life. And so really what it is, it is, is for women leaders, with, if you're trying to, you know, manage your life, you're trying to understand, you know, where your secret lies, your secret sauce lie, um, I feel like that's incredibly um, important. And then the last part here, ladies, I just want to let you guys know, you know, these are all of the different avenues that you can connect with me. Um, we can stay connected and we can even go beyond the meetup group. I wanted to at least start connecting with some of my UK friends. Um, I have a girlfriend who recently moved to the area and she's working in the education system. Um, and so I'll be doing some visiting here probably at the beginning of next year. So I wanted to go ahead and start connecting um, with some of my beautiful UK uh, sisters, um, you know, before I do make that, that transition or do make that visit. So um, the you guys, if you guys have any other questions, this is, you know, your time to ask those questions. Um, I know we've gone over the hour, but I'm definitely available to answer any other questions you may have about identifying and showcasing your value. Well, Anything else? Yeah, for me, it's, it's been great, actually, at least the, 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 the uh, your advice about more, how to promote ourselves or how to put ourselves in the system and our core values, which is very been shared for me. I'm going to do I'm going to try to do that for the next couple of weeks and I'll let you know yeah. what the result will be in our next meeting. <laughs> yeah, because you know, like I said, it's is about what you're willing to fight for. And then confidence is not just the belief, but it's about to me, is it's not confidence until you put it into action, right? So you make some type of decision decision and you take some type of action. So you need to keep me posted. Keep me posted on business. <laughs> I want to I want to hear about like the conversations and the discussions that you're having. Um, definitely keep me posted. Anything from you, um, Sam or Elaine? Any other questions? Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. That you got something out of it. Yay! Thank you. Especially how to identify your core values in a very competitive contractor market. I need to be. Um, yeah, a letter to the yes, yes. You have to you have to understand how to differentiate yourself. Um. Um, and I like this. I like the fact that you say that you're a change. Uh, think you call yourself a change manager. Um, you may need to just kind of specify that too um, on your website. You know what you mean by a change manager? Like you know, organizations call me in when they're having this exact struggle. Yeah, business change manager when they're having these exact struggles, and I come in, and this is typically the result that you give that you get when I come in and work with your organization. So yeah, definitely. Yes, 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 exactly. But also make sure you kind of create the picture, right? Not just I move people from point A to point B because everything that we do, whether we're in business for ourselves or whether we're working um, in the corporate setting is to bring transformation, right? So help paint the picture of what their transformation looks like for them, right? So not only will they, you know, they complete their project on schedule and on budget, what are some of the other extras that they get from working, you know, working with you? And I think that that helps you to be more visible and differentiate yourself as well, right? So yeah, definitely, you know, if you wanted to, you know, share some of those, bounce some of those um, ideas off of me, just, you know, just send me a message, you guys, you know, you know, reach out to me, send me an email, whatever it is, however way I can support you and I, and I can help you, just let me know, okay? You are so okay. welcome. Is there anything from you, Elaine, that you got out of the, um, the workshop or the, the first meetup here that you want to cover? Oh yeah, so thanks a lot. I found it was very helpful as I'm only just realizing that you can't rely on your work alone to speak for you. No, you sure can't. 
I did that for years and was still mislabeled. So no, you can't allow your work to just speak for you, but you got to speak. It's like you got to give a voice to your work, right? And you got to make sure that you're engaging with the right people. You missed a bit. Okay. Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is, um, and it may be a couple of days because I'm actually packing up here um, to take a vacation. Uh, so it may be a couple of days before I put the replay out there. I'm going to try to put it on uh, YouTube so it's a little bit more accessible. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys a, a message and meet up um, once the uh, replay is out there. And actually, I started recording it late. So uh, we didn't get all of the, you know, initial discussions at the beginning was kind of helping, um, you know, the other two ladies just kind of work through some of the challenges that they're having around promoting themselves. But there's going to be a good a bit of other information. And of course, all of the stuff that I shared in the presentation that will be on the recording. So I'll let you guys know. So if guys, if there's nothing else, I really want to thank you guys for your time and for, um, just giving me some feedback as well on, you know, what times will work best for you guys with doing some of our virtual meetups and sharing. And so, like I said, definitely connect with me, you know, on LinkedIn, um, Periscope, which actually I don't have Periscope up here on my list, but Periscope, again, is Erica T. Johnson. Um, and then, of course, you can go to my website and just kind of see some of the things that I do um, and even some of the resources that I have out there already that could help you guys, right? Um, if there's anybody that wants to, you know, even, you know, us, you know, go a step further and us work together, I also have a 30-minute free consult that's out there as well where we can see, you know, how we can work together to kind of help you get promoted um, and move your business forward as well. All right, so ladies, have a good day, and I will talk with you later. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. You too.